I just wanted to, because next week, you guys probably know, but next week is going to be the um, federal election on July 2nd. So I just wanted to give you a few thoughts there, because some things have changed from previous years that you might not be aware of. You would have got a pamphlet in the mail. Um, I tried to do a, like some research on the political parties, but there's just so many political parties out there, and they just have all these different views. But um, I just wanted to give you a rundown, just in case you guys didn't know. I, I looked into how just the voting system works um, in Australia, and maybe this will give you a bit of information. So basically, there's a lower house and an upper house, right? And the reason why there's a lower house and an upper house, it's a balance of powers. Laws, has to, laws have to start in the lower house, and if they're passed in the lower house by majority or however they vote, then it goes into the upper house. Um, and if the upper house also passes it, then it becomes a law. Um, now, the lower house is called the House of Representatives because it's actually um, people that represent certain population, as far as I understand. So they, they, they create these electorates. So, you know, we're in the Watson electorate and you'll have your electorate. Um, and the idea of the House of Representatives is so that the number of the population and people in Australia have representation. Because obviously in the eastern states, there's more people there. So they, they should have more of a say when it comes to representing the people than states that have less population. But to balance that power, you have the Senate. So the Senate is the balance of power in states because it's not fair if there are laws passed for all of Australia and Sydney has the greatest population, they hold the majority, so Sydney is basically ruling all of Australia. So the way they do it is the Senate, there are equal, as far as I understand, besides the territories, there's like 12 senators in each state. So WA will have 12 senators, you know, South Australia I think will have 12 senators, New South Wales will have 12 senators, and there's something like 76 senators all up. So the idea there is, so people are represented in their different uh, like populations, if that makes sense, and then the Senate is to represent the state. So that's why we vote for our senators, which is that big long white paper, and then you vote for the House of Representatives, which is that little green paper. So there's that balance of power in terms of representation by population, and then representation by state. So each state is equally represented in the federal government. <coughs> now, the way, the, it's interesting, because the way the House of Representatives, the vote is, on your green piece of paper, you have to number every box. If you don't number every box, your vote doesn't count. So that's very important. If you want your vote to count in the House of Representatives, there, there might be, so in the Watson electorate, there might be eight people from different political parties going to be the, the representative for that electorate. And then you decide, you know, one to however many are on the sheet. If you have to number every box, otherwise your vote won't count. Um, now, now how, <laughs> how they decide who wins? Uh, do you guys know how they count these votes? <laughs> <coughs> so how they decide who wins that position in the House of Representatives for that electorate, you have to get a, um, an absolute majority. So what that means is it's not just the person who gets the most f number one votes in that electorate wins the seat. And that's why we have preferential voting. Now that's the, that's the way it's in America and it's really screwed up because that's why people will say, well, I don't want to vote for a you know, libertarian candidate or I don't want to vote for a minor party because I'll waste my vote, because think about it, if there are two people in the lead, and there's one person, there's no way they're gonna get the most votes, you won't give your vote to them because you want your vote to count towards one of the two. So that's why you always hear Americans saying, well, I don't wanna waste my vote. You know, if, you, you know, if, if Donald Trump becomes the Republican nominee and the, and the Republicans split off, you know, they're basically gonna lose the election because if the Republicans split, now, now, you know, they might have had 50% of the votes, Democrats had 50%, but if that party splits, now it's 25-25, Democrats are the clear winner because they're going to have 50%. So that's why it's a really messed up way of how the vote happens because nobody will ever vote for a minor party because if you vote for a minor party, you're basically just throwing your vote away if you're not voting for one of the two that are at the top that are actually in the race, they say. And that's why it's... That's why in America it's so important when they have those polls and the media trying to see who's in front, it really affects who's going to win because people want to vote for people that are winning. They don't want to vote for somebody who doesn't have a chance of winning and waste their vote. Now that doesn't happen in Australia. So let's say you have three candidates, for example, and you have you know, Liberal, Labour and a minor party. <coughs> well, let's say party one, two and three. And you have one candidate, so they, what they'll do is they'll count up the total number of votes that are cast. So let's say there are uh, 100,000 votes cast in that electorate. So 
the person that wins has to get at least 50,001 votes in order to win that seat. So even though the votes are split, you know, uh, what would be like, say, 40, uh, like 45, what's the matter? 40, 30, 40, 35, and 25? Is that 1,000? So you don't win just because you have 40,000 votes. You need 50,001. So the way they then figure out the winner, the low person with the lowest votes is then ex excluded, and then their votes are then divvied out based on the preferences. So if, you're, if the preference was two to the number one candidate, and it was three, so that's how they work it out until somebody reaches 50,001 votes. And as soon as that person reaches 50,001 votes, they win the seat in that electorate. Um, now in the Senate, it's different because you know the Senate for New South Wales, you have 12 senators. So you're not trying to get an absolute majority. The way they figure out what's called the quota to win that seat is they will count the number of total votes, then they'll divide it by the number of seats plus one. So tw 12, what was it? Divided by 12 plus one is 13. And that's the quota you need to reach in order to be elected as a senator. So the maths. With, being, with voting for uh, the Senate is a lot more complicated because obviously it's not just the absolute majority. There's a quota you have to reach. Um, so if it's like, you know, let's make it easy, like 130,000 votes, that means you have to get at least 10,001 votes to be voted as a senator. And it works the same way. They, they, they allocate all the primary votes and whoever has the least amount of votes, um, there's all these things that, that go on because there's preferences and stuff like that too. So. <laughs> but the way it's going to work this year is basically the least, the person with the least amount of primary votes, they're then excluded, their votes are divvied out, and then whoever hits the quota is then elected, and whoever's least again, they're excluded, their votes are divvied out, until all 12 seats are allocated. Does that make sense? Now what's interesting about this election is it's called, it's a, have you heard what they're talking about, a double dissolution election? So let me, th let me explain to you what a double dissolution is if you don't know. But a double dissolution happens because normally with the Senate, see every, every election, you know, the House of Representatives, so the one that represents Watson electorate, that, that goes every election, right? So somebody has to try and win that seat every three years. With the Senate, there's actually a cycle. So when you get elected as a senator, you actually serve a six-year term. But half the senators are also serving six years. So what happens is there's a cycle that every three years, half the senators uh, 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 office is up for grabs and the other, um, the other half stay in office. And then next election, the ones that were elected last election have another three years and so on and so forth. So there's this cycle between them. Now what a double dissolution is, you know how I was saying a law starts in the House of Representatives and then it goes into the House of the Senate and then it, it passes in both, it becomes law? Well what happens is Sometimes there's a deadlock because, you know, Labor might have the majority in the House of Representatives, but Liberal might have the majority in the House of, uh, in, the, in the Senate. So what happens is if there's a law that Labor wants to pass and Liberal doesn't want to pass it, it keeps passing through the House of Representatives and gets stopped in the Senate. It gets passed in the House of Representatives and gets stopped in the Senate. Now if that happens at least two times, because obviously it, it's not like it's just happening every day. If that happens at least twice, what happens is the Prime Minister can call a, a double dissolution election, meaning that all 76 Senate seats go up for election. And that actually helps the minor parties because that means the quota in order to be elected is now halved. Because remember, it's the total number of votes divided by the total number of seats. So normally, sorry, I had it wrong. So normally six senators would go up for election, but in a double dissolution, all 12 seats are up for election. So the the quota is effectively halved. Um, so that gives you a bit of information there. So that's how, they, that's how it works. Hopefully that gives you a bit of information. But what I wanted to say, um, what's, what I think is very important, um, the way you vote for the House, well, the upper house now, which is the Senate, has actually changed. So for those of you who have voted before, you know normally you'd vote above the line and below the line? Normally what would happen, if you vote below the line, nobody would ever do it because you'd have to number every single box. And there's like 120 people there and you don't even know who they are and you don't want to spend an hour voting. So everyone votes above the line. Now the way it used to work, when you put a one above, you'd ha just have to put a one in the party that you wanted to vote for. And what that would do, 
Every party has their official preferences. So if you voted one for Family First, Family First as a party have decided, okay, if we don't win, this is who will get the vote. If they don't win, this is who will, will get the vote. And this is what you're doing when you're preferencing. You're saying, I want this person to win. If they don't win, it gets, goes to this person. If they don't win, it goes to this person. If they don't win, it goes to this person. Until somebody that gets elected actually uses that vote to get elected. And then your vote stops, obviously, because you can't vote for two people. Now that's how it normally works and, and the way minor parties in the past have used this to their advantage and, and it's, it's just how it works, there's no problem with it because you're basically delegating your vote to that party and say, I support you and whoever you support, that's where my vote's gonna go. So what, what will happen is in the back, a lot of backroom deals will happen, right? Because these minor parties, they'll make sure that this person has preferenced them, they'll preference each other. And there was a guy called Ricky Muir in Victoria where he only got like 1% or something of the primary vote, meaning a number one, but he got voted into the Senate because of all these preference deals. So that's been the rules that have happened ever since we know voting. And that's why when you go in, you put a one in the, in the top of the line, your vote's done, you put your white paper in the box and you number every box in the House of Representatives and you vote. Now what has happened this year, which is really, was really, really sneaky by the Labor, the Liberal and the Greens, they tried to stop these preference deals that were going on. Now, these are the rules that have been placed. Everyone knows this is how it works. Um, you know, if you wanted to actually delegate your vote how you wanted, you'd use the below the line method. But what they did this year is they changed the above the line method to have to number all the boxes. So they took away all those preference deals. So the way that minor parties got into power before, Labor and Liberal and um, the Greens pass, rush this law through right before the election, like this only happened like maybe a month ago or two months ago, and totally change how people are gonna vote. So now, the above the line vote is you actually number at least six boxes. Now you can number just one box, but you see, before, if you numbered one box above the line, let's say you voted one family first and family first didn't win, family first would decide where your vote went. So your vote was, wasn't wasted. It would go to wherever the party that you had voted for. But now if you just put a one above the line and you vote family first and family first doesn't win, now your vote's just gone because you voted for family first, there's no other preferences on your, on your vote, so they don't know who to give it to, so it dies, right? And this is why they say you have to number at least one to six so that they know your preferences. So you don't have to number one to six, you have to put at least one number in but they're encouraging people to number one to six so that your vote has more of a life. You can number every box. So if there's, if there's 12 parties, you can number one to 12 and you control which party will get your vote. I, I bet probably below the line, nobody will do it that way, but you have to, they've changed it. Instead of numbering every box, you just number at least one to 12 and then your vote will count. Because before, if you didn't number every box, then your, your vote would not count. It would just be discarded because it wasn't complete. So they've changed those rules because they say, hey, you know, if somebody's put a one in a box, they've obviously shown that they want to vote for that person. So you shouldn't just discount their vote just because they didn't follow all the instructions. <clears throat> so this is what's like really sneaky because obviously for the past however many decades, people are used to just putting one top of the line, right? But so that they snuck it in just before the election. That's why it's so sneaky because everyone's going to go in to the voting booths this Saturday thinking, oh, put one above the line for the party I normally vote for. That's how I've always voted. But this time, if you do that, if your party doesn't win, your vote's gone. It's not going to the party's preferences anymore because that system is gone. So just be sure that you, you do number as many boxes as you can if you're going to vote above the line. It's probably easier than voting below the line. Um, the other thing as well is because, remember I was telling you, it, the, in order to win a seat there needs to be an absolute majority in the House of Representatives and it needs to, they need to fulfill that quota to be elected as a Senate. So what I want to sort of just encourage you now is obviously for us here who are awake, you know, uh, to what's going on in the world, we probably do not want to support Liberal or Labour. Um, you know, the reality of it is probably one of those parties will win. Um, and we'll, pro you know, personally, I would probably preference liberal above labor because labor is more left and liberal is more right. <clears throat> but you don't have to think just because labor and liberal are going to win that you have to put them one or two. Do you know? Because what you can do is, and what I'm planning to do is, I'll put number one of the party I want to win. Because if, even if they don't win, I'll, I'll put the preference, you know, to somebody else. So 
the, the way I'm planning on doing it, I don't know all the parties, but my philosophy is going to be, I'll, I'll probably put like family first or Rise Up Australia first. So these are some Christian parties that believe in limited government. And then probably put the other Christian parties. Um, and then before liberal, I'll put maybe like the limited, li liberal democratic party and some other parties that I believe are small government, you know, don't not compulsory vaccination, that sort of thing. But I'll make sure my last vote, you know, my last preference how, box, I'll put on liberal. So if all of the first ones don't get my vote, it'll end up probably on liberal. And then, you know, I'm not going to put any number in like the Greens or Labor because, I, you know, I'd, want, I'd rather my vote die than, than go to them. So, <clears throat> so keep that in mind when you're voting. You don't have to put liberal first, but as long as you just have them in your preferences at the end, eventually your vote will get to them if the other parties don't get elected um, the Senate, the, for the Senate anyway. And it works the same for the, the House of Representatives. <clears throat> so hopefully that gives you a, um, a bit of information, a bit of a quick rundown. If you have any questions about it, you can ask me later. But um, I definitely think, you know, I would encourage you to go vote. I think it's, I think it's um, you know, obviously we're given that um, ability in this country to affect the vote. So I think we should at least use it. Um, obviously, in a perfect world, there wouldn't be voting. There would just be, you know, judges set over to um, um, to enforce the laws of God. But yeah, we don't live in a perfect world. They have this system, so let's use the system against them as much as we can. 